these days many people are struggling with issues like fear, anxiety and worry. And so I wanted to do something for you that could really help if you're facing any of these kind of issues. It's a review of a book. The book is called Transforming Anxiety. It's a very good way in my experience of dealing with the issues of fear, anxiety, worry, anything that's stressing you or upsetting you. It's very good for helping with these sorts of things, whether in relationships or at work. This is all under the theme of be your best self and, and ways to be the highest and best within you. So I've made some notes in my trusty notebook and I'll use this as a reference because I want to make sure that I, I don't forget to say anything that I think is really important. I used the methods in this book some years ago when I was going through a very challenging time and I must admit I found them life-changing and really made a big difference. And recently I gave a copy, it was about a few months ago, I gave a copy to a close friend of mine who basically raved about the book and it was life-changing her as well. She went, she was off work with uh, an anxiety issue and after working through the exercises in the book, she was able to go back to work and deal with issues that previously pretty much freaked her out and was able to handle them pretty smoothly. And she's still learning things about working with the material, but now she's much more able to cope with the stresses and strains that she was going through at work. So that kind of that prompted me to say, okay, I really ought to do a review of this so that you, that you can also find out about it and see for yourself whether it's something that would be useful to you. Anxiety, worry, fear and stress is something many people are facing these days. It's having effective tools to work with these issues is really important. The challenge with dealing with issues like fear and anxiety is that often the types of methods that we think ought to work don't actually work or they only work up to a point. Once our level of anxiety has gone up and up to a certain level, it seems to be like things like affirmations don't really do it. Um, meditation might not even do it. Things like uh, cognitive therapy really help a lot of people, but sometimes if there's a high level of anxiety, it, it doesn't work either. So many things which can be very helpful, generally speaking, actually don't help when it comes to anxiety. As I say, if it goes beyond a certain level, we need to use another method and used to use other techniques. And the reason for that, as they point out in this book, is that the heart has actually more nerves traveling up to the brain than the brain has traveling down to the heart. So in, there are many situations in which going on in the heart, our emotional center has actually more to do with our inner state than our brain has. We tend to think the brain controls everything, but it's not actually true. The heart has a big say because the heart has its own brain. Sometimes they call it the heart brain, its own capacity to, to remember and to respond to events and to circumstances. So it can be that our, our, our feeling center has got us into a state of anxiety and it keeps triggering the brain to look around for more things to worry about. So it isn't necessarily true that our thinking is causing feelings. Our feelings can be causing our thinking. And many um, self-help methods assume that it's always our thinking that affects our feelings, but it's not always true. There are situations when it's our feelings that are affecting our thinking. We need to intervene on a feeling level in order to deal with them. The ways that allow us to deal with things on the feeling level are actually what helps calm our system down. That calms our feeling center down, or symbol symbolically we're referring to this as the heart, which then allows it to send signals to the brain to let the rest of our system calm down. Now, of course, some people resort to some form of medication for treating anxiety. However, as we know, that kind of side effects and long term might even be addictive and doesn't really deal with the underlying issues. And it's not necessary when we can actually find other ways of dealing with the issues that, that solve the underlying patterns of thinking and feeling that are causing them. And the wonderful thing about this book is it doesn't mean you have to stop doing what you're doing already. It can act as an adjunct or as an addition to whatever you're doing already to deal with anxiety or fear or worry. And then as you find the methodology in the book really working for you, then you can look to seeing if you want to let go of those other methods. So I don't want to give too much away from the book because it's copyright material, but I just want to 
give you enough information to see whether this is something you really want to try. So with the techniques um, in this book, basically you, you go into the feelings and into a body state. And the key to it seems to be is that what they discovered, because there's a lot of research, a lot of scientific research in the book, uh, or at least behind the information they give in the book. Although it's a small book, um, it's packed with really useful information. It's well worth getting your hands on a copy because uh, there's, not, there's not any filler in it, there's not any wasted information. It gives you background information that you need to know. Then there's lots of very practical exercises that you can use to calm your system down and try out the different ones in different situations and see what works for you. And in my experience, as I say, they're really effective. So the thing about, as I say, when we feel some kind of anxiety, uh, it's uncomfortable and we tend to want to move away from those feelings. And, and sometimes our ways of moving away from those feelings actually make them worse because it's imagine like you were dealing with a frightened child and uh, if you run away from the frightened child it's going to trigger it even more so in a way our body state some, can sometimes be like that they were a part of our system is like a frightened child it's anxious it's fearful and we withdraw from it it doesn't help it makes it worse it gets better much more rapidly if we actually approach it in the right way and the exercises in the book really help you to do that and give you a framework where you can do that and feel comfortable and then the anxiety starts to diminish. And out of the research, there's a few different things, key elements. One element is that, um, as I say, paying attention to the body and how the body is feeling is one key. And one of the basic principles they use is they do that by putting attention into the heart area because we often symbolically see that's the feeling area. So it works really well to put attention there and then combine that with steady breathing and then add to that bringing in a warm comfortable feeling or a feeling of compassion a feeling of peace a feeling of love a feeling of focusing on a pleasant feeling so this combination of attention inside the body especially in the heart area slowing down the breathing our breathing so it's steady and then focusing on a pleasant feeling those combined are seem to be the keys that they use in different ways and the different techniques in the book. Now, why would these work? Why would these make a difference, such a difference, such a profound difference, I would say, in how we are feeling? By doing so, we're giving their feeling-centered a different set of information where basically it's the same as saying to it, it's okay, you don't, you don't need to worry about this and we give it a chance to focus on something else because once it gets triggered by anxiety it's almost like a feeling center and the brain go into a loop the our feeling center has, has gone into red alert or something dangerous going on here and the brain gets triggered to look around for what is it <laughs> what's the danger <laughs> and it keeps looking for dangers and problems and issues and, and then and it triggers the uh, parts the hormones to get the body into more, even more into state of being on alert. So they get into a loop. So we can break the cycle and help get our feeling center to begin to calm down. This really helps because what they find is a steady breathing rhythm has a profound effect on the heart, especially the heart rate. And I don't mean just that when we get anxious, the heart speeds up. It's, there's more to it than that. When we get anxious, the heart rate doesn't just speed up. It can actually start shifting around it it fluctuates and as it fluctuates that's what tricks seem to trigger the brain into putting attention into worried things it's, it's like there's something going on there's something wrong and the body doesn't know what it is and the brain's trying to hunt around for what it is so when we get the steady breathing rhythm what happens is that the the heart begins to get into a regular rhythm of be it does not so much where it's fast or slow it has more to do it's that's part of it but it's also a lot to do with whether it's regular and regular breathing tends to create a regular heart rhythm and so that helps the feeling center to calm down and signal the brain that it's okay to calm down now it's okay the the alert is over now calm down and and as we do that what happens is our cognitive centers begin to waken up and we can actually think more clearly so we can remember better and we can think more clearly when, our, when we calm down our body system and we use the, the techniques in the book to, to calm our feelings down, then the brain follows and the body follows. And so we can restore calmness and peace of mind using these techniques. So let me just read out 
So you can get a flavour of the book. It's it's both practical and based in science and having an engineering background. I kind of like things that have got some research basis to what they say and not just something somebody's making up as they go along. This is from page six. Neuroscience has shown that feelings and thoughts are separate yet interacting functions which communicate via two-way neural connections between the cognitive and emotional centers of the brain. The neural connections from the emotional to the cognitive center, in other words, from the heart to the brain, are stronger and more numerous than those going from the cognitive to the emotional centers. This helps explain why emotional attitudes and feelings can disrupt thoughts and dominate thinking, and why it's difficult to turn off strong emotions through rational thought alone. It also helps explain why cognitive behavioral therapies do not work for many. And then they go on to say later about the role of the heart in transforming anxiety. The physical heart sets the rhythm and pace for the whole body. The respiratory and digestive systems and brain waves also generate rhythms, although they are not as strong as the heart's rhythm. Most people don't realize that the heartbeat produces 40 to 60 times more electrical amplitude than the brain and broadcast an electrical signal that permeates every cell in the body. The strength of the heart's magnetic field is 5,000 times greater than the field generated by the brain and can be measured several feet away from the body in all directions. Your heart, this is still on page 44, the heart brain. Your heart also has its own nervous system or brain in the heart containing around 40,000 neurons. This heart brain can sense feel, learn, remember, and process information. There are more nerves going from your heart up to your brain than from your brain to your heart. This has profound implications. The rhythmic beating part of your heart tells the brain how the body feels. With every beat, your heart sends neural messages to the parts of your brain that govern emotion and higher reasoning capacities. There's lots of scientific links in here, by the way, if you're interested. Any change in the rhythmic patterns of your heart alerts the patterns of neural activity that your brain receives and affects the way you feel and how your brain processes information. In other words, what's going on in our feelings affects what goes on in our brain and what's going on in our brain and affects what's going on in our feelings. And that sets up these un uncomfortable feedback loops like anxiety and fear when the especially when the actual specific cause of that anxiety fear is not present in that moment and so we're not actually in the moment yes. so this book transforming anxiety is is packed with information and ideas about the causes of anxiety and how to deal with it and how to transform it um, whether it's just something that's troubling you uh, currently or where it's been a long-term chronic pattern it's able to help with any of these because it deals with the underlying causes of things so and intervenes in our body system in ways that sometimes other methods don't always do. So if you've tried other things and they haven't worked for you um, or you, you're looking for something to try to deal with to help you to deal with anxiety or stress or what have you, I really suggest you have a look at this one to help you to be your best self. Please, if you're working with some kind of anxiety issue comment below or if you find something else useful then please comment below and so that our people can hear about your experience and benefit from them so blessings to you blessings on your journey in life